So be careful at going out. At this time, I would like to introduce uh, Reverend J.B. Kump to give the invocation. I think all of us here tonight know that uh, one of the greatest freedoms we have in this nation is the freedom to exercise our faith. And one of the ways that we best exercise that is to go to the Lord in prayer. So let's do that now. Heavenly Father, we come to you with praise on our lips, love in our hearts, and joy to be about the work that you've called us to. Father God, we believe fervently that you have a hand on the founding of this great nation. That, Lord God, you have an eye on this nation even today. We pray that you'll give us a way to enjoy our freedom and to honor, Lord, the direction that you have ordained for this nation in this world. We lift up the defenders of uh, this nation in uniforms at home and across the sea. We give you thanks for our first responders, Lord God, who are ever vigilant. We pray for our elected officials at every level, knowing what responsibilities they have. Lord, we pray for wisdom, strength, and integrity. We especially lift up our governor, Father God, giving you thanks for him, his willingness to serve. And pray, Lord God, that you give him good health and a sense of your presence in his life. Lord, you've made this nation a beacon of hope for this globe, even as you, Father God, provide ultimate hope for us because of your grace and your mercy. We pray for your blessings this night. In your name, amen. 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 We are grateful tonight to have the Brevard County Sheriff's Office Honor Guard present the colors, and we will have Barbara McGillicuddy to give the Pledge to Allegiance and sing the National Anthem. Please stand for the presentation of colors. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God.
I believe we have to be prepared to protect ourselves. The next thing I'd ask you to do is go to our website. Don't wait and do it tomorrow. Do it tonight when you get home. Go to our website. There's a video on there. It's called The Four A's of Survival. And what I will tell you is that I will teach people to run, hide, and tell. I don't teach people to run, hide, and fight because all those were, were a step-by-step -step guide. And if you want to see, look at any of the shootings. And in fact, use the Pulse nightclub. The, the people there did exactly what they had been coached to do. They ran and did. And unfortunately, they were waiting for law enforcement to save them or the killer to find them. And for 49 of them, that's what happened. I can't in good conscience teach you to hide. It is time for us to understand this is war, and we have to stand together, shoulder to shoulder, prepared to attack our enemy. It takes great courage to attack someone that's trying to kill you or your family, but it may just be the only chance you have to survive. Go look at our website. It's called the four A's of survival, and the four A's are simply this, and there is no order to them. The four A's are simply this. Arm yourself. If you have a gun, carry it with you. If not, think about other means. Awareness. What's going on around you? The situational awareness may just be what it takes to save your life. Avoidance. By avoidance, I mean run. Run like your life depends on it. You have to know yourself, though. You have to know what you're capable of. How many of you think you could run? Go ahead and put your hands up. I got like two people in this entire list. <laughs> I will tell you, I'll use myself. I've never won a foot race in my entire life. I don't know, I don't know what it is. I think it's my technique. It's the only thing I do. But I know that the last one of the eggs. Because when we look at arming yourself, awareness and avoidance, the last one is attack. And if you find yourself in the middle of that violent attack, I want you to remember this. I want you to think about that since 9-11, how many videos and photographs we've seen of the Twin Towers and the Pentagon where thousands of Americans were killed. There was only one of the terrorist missions that failed that day. It was the one where brave Americans took back the plane. There's no way to know how many lives they saved that day. But what I do know is that their heroic actions saved countless lives and demonstrated to terrorists what happens when America stands together and says, we've had enough of this. So I ask you to go to our website. Please, don't wait for the to go Thank you for having me here, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
but he's a downright wonderful human being. So I'd like to now introduce the
five people there lost their lives. And then uh, about know, five months ago, we had the shooter at the Fort Lauderdale Airport. And it flew in from the flight from Alaska. So, you know, we, and then you look at what happened in Manchester, you look at what happened in London, you, mean, you just look at just what happened in, in, uh, at uh, Paris and London, uh, or yesterday the day before. I mean, think about this. It's happening so much, you can't remember was that yesterday or the day before or last week? We have to take, what well, the church says, we have to take this seriously. We have to prepare ourselves, but we have to be active. We have to support our law enforcement, step one. We've got, to, we've got to make sure they know we appreciate them. But then on top of that, anything we see, anything we see, we have to call them. We could be wrong. It could be nothing. But they can't help us if, if we don't call them. And then what we've got to do is we've got to make sure we invest in law enforcement. You know, if you look at, if you look at, uh, and there, you know, whatever, and now I've been in this for, it's my seventh budget, there's always needs that people have, everybody has different needs. We've got to invest in law enforcement, we've got to invest in safety. I tell people, there's three jobs, and well, people ask me about three things. They want a job. I don't need people, I don't need somebody getting out of high school, getting out of college, and saying I want unemployment, food, stamps, uh, Public housing, you know, no one thinks that way. They want to work. Number two, they want their kids and their grandkids to get a good education. And number three, they want to be safe and want their neighborhood to be safe. Thank God there's people that will put on the uniform to defend either our safety locally or our freedom. I was just up in Jacksonville Road this morning and I uh, tell you how, how it, everything impacts us. So, you know, the guy that uh, I guess it was not two weeks ago. That in Times Square that ran his car and uh, killed a 18 year old girl and injured, I think, 22 more people. Well, there were two of our sailors from a ship up in Jacksonville, Bayport, uh, on the Iwo Jima, that were right there, and the car came within 18 inches of hitting them. Uh, today, I had the opportunity to give each of them the Medal of Merit, which, which only I can give to, uh, to, to the uh, military. Uh, and one of them, or both of them, Instead of running away, right, they ran to and helped these individuals that were hit. And uh, they, uh, one of them, uh, Dave was a, a 